This lesson will focus on the rhombus. You should recall from your previous studies of math that a rhombus is a parallelogram with four congruent sides. Now, because every rhombus is a parallelogram, every rhombus will have all of the properties of a parallelogram. That's important to know. So every rhombus will have opposite sides that are parallel, opposite sides that are congruent, a diagonal that divides the rhombus into two congruent triangles. All of the properties that we know about the parallelogram also work for the rhombus. That's really important to know. In addition to all of the parallelogram properties, the rhombus has a little something extra going on for it. Every rhombus will always have perpendicular diagonals. So if you look at the picture here, you see the right angle where the diagonals intersect. And at the same time, diagonals that bisect pairs of opposite angles. So again, all of the properties of a parallelogram plus perpendicular diagonals and diagonals that bisect opposite angles. All right, so let's go ahead and see how we can use some of these properties in both some problems that involve algebra and even in some proof. Number one says in simplest radical form, find the perimeter of a rhombus whose diagonals are 12 inches and 18 inches. Because there's no picture here, the very first thing I'm going to do is sketch a picture. And I think I'm going to label this rhombus A, B, C, D just so that I can talk about it and reference it in my uh, lesson. I'm going to make the point where those diagonals intersect point E. Because one of the diagonals measures 12 inches, and I know that every rhombus is a parallelogram, I know that each piece of the diagonal has to be 6 inches. Because in a parallelogram, the diagonals bisect each other. And likewise, I know that if the longer diagonal is 18 inches, I know that each piece of it must be 9, because every rhombus is a parallelogram, and a parallelogram has diagonals that bisect one another. The other piece of information you need in order to be able to solve this problem is you need to remember that a rhombus has diagonals that are perpendicular. So those angles all around point E are all going to be right angles. So you might ask, why is this useful? Why is this helpful? Well, if I look just at that red triangle, it's a right triangle where I know the lengths of two out of the three sides. So now I can use the Pythagorean theorem to go and find the length of the third side. Why is that important? Well, I'm trying to find the perimeter. And I find the perimeter of a rhombus or any polygon by simply adding together the lengths of all of its sides. So my first mission here is going to be to use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of the side. So 6 squared plus 9 squared is equal to x squared. Or in other words, x squared is equal to 117. And all I did was plug the 6 squared plus the 9 squared into my calculator. So x is equal to the square root of 117. Now 117 is not a perfect square, but it does have a factor that is a perfect square. 9 will go in there exactly 13 times. So in simplest radical form, x is 3 times the square root of 13. And remember, in this problem, x represents the length of one side. We're trying to find the perimeter. Well, because this figure is a rhombus, I know that the length of all sides will be the same. So if one side is 3 root 13, all four sides are 3 root 13. So I'm going to find my perimeter by taking the length of one side, 3 root 13, and multiplying it times 4. Or in other words, the perimeter here, when I multiply the 4 times the 3, I get 12 times the square root of 13. So that's a nice little mix of rhombus properties, parallelogram properties, Pythagorean theorem, radicals, simplifying radicals, multiplying radicals. There's a, a whole lot going on there in that question. Okay, in the next one it says rhombus ABCD has diagonals that intersect at point E. The measure of angle DAC is 18 degrees. They want us to now go ahead and find the measure of angle ABC. So this one, like number one, because there's no picture, the first thing I'm going to do is draw a little sketch. 
And really, if I had more room, I would make my sketch a little bit bigger, but I have to do the best I can here with what I've got to work with. And these two diagonals, it says intersect at point E. The measure of angle DAC is 18 degrees. So I'm going to label that little angle in there 18 degrees. And they want us to find the measure of angle ABC. So the angle they want us to find is this one right here. I can think of a few different ways uh, to solve this question. I'm going to look first of all um, at my properties of a rhombus. I know that in every rhombus the diagonals bisect the pairs of opposite angles. So if this little angle in here is 18, this little one in here must also be 18. So the whole thing, angle BAD, is 36. That's important because every rhombus is a parallelogram. And a parallelogram has opposite angles that are congruent. So therefore, angle DCB must be 36. And each of the little halves must be 18. This is helpful to me because now I can go find the angle that I'm looking for simply by doing 18 plus 18 plus that desired angle, which I'm going to be super unoriginal and call x, have to sum up to 180. So in other words, x plus 36 is equal to 180, making x equal to 144. And x was the desired angle. So my measure of angle ABC must be 144 degrees. The last question leads us very nicely into the whole idea of proof that we're going to explore last. It says, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram where two consecutive sides are congruent, does that be, is that enough to make the quadrilateral a rhombus? So once again, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start with a picture. Consecutive sides, remember, are, might be called adjacent sides. They're sides that are right next to each other. So sides like the top side and the right side, or the right side and the bottom side. I'm going to say left side and the bottom side. So there's my consecutive or adjacent sides that are congruent. Because this figure is a parallelogram, I also know that opposite sides are congruent. So the right side has to be whatever the left side is. And the top side has to be whatever length the bottom side is. So lo and behold, now I have all four sides that are congruent. So as far as explain, remember the word explain means in words. So I'm going to say parallelograms have opposite sides that are congruent. So therefore, congruent consecutive sides will actually make all four sides congruent. And that makes our figure a rhombus. So an answer to the question, is this enough to prove it's a rhombus? Yes. And again, it has to do with the fact that in a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent. Okay, and then to finish this lesson off, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at this last problem, where they say that we're given this quadrilateral with those vertices, and we're being asked to prove that the quadrilateral is a rhombus. I'm going to say that use of the grid is going to be optional. So in the box above, it says that in order to show that any quadrilateral is a rhombus, you can use any one of the following reasons. You can show that your quadrilateral has all sides that are congruent. You can show that your quadrilateral is a parallelogram where the diagonals are perpendicular. And notice that if you're going to use that method, you must show that your quadrilateral is a parallelogram first. And then lastly, you must show or you, your quadrilateral is a parallelogram where two of the consecutive sides are congruent. I'm going to go for the most simple one of all, or what I consider to be the most simple one of all, this quadrilateral where all of the sides are congruent. So if I wanted to, I could go ahead and plot those points. And if you're a real visual person, you might find that very helpful. 
but I'm simply going to say, well, I'm going to find the length of each side by using the distance formula. So with any other formula, if I'm going to use it, the first thing I need to do is put it down on my paper. And then I'm going to start computing some distances. And like always, I'm going to tell the person reading my paper exactly which length I'm finding. So I'm going to start by finding the length between points A and B. And again, I'm going to show whoever is reading my paper exactly what numbers I'm substituting into the formula. And I'm going to substitute or plug everything into my calculator, starting with the parentheses. So when all of the computations are done, I find that the distance between points A and B, or in other words, the length of line segment AB, is 5 units. Then I'm going to move on and do the same thing for side BC. And again, I'm going to plug all of that into my calculator, starting with the open parentheses. And I find that the length of BC is also 5 units. And if I had ended up with those two different, I would have stopped right here. I would have known I had a mistake. Because I'm showing that this has a, is a rhombus, I know all of its sides are going to have to be the same length. They're not going to ask us to prove that something's a rhombus if it's not. As expected, the length of CD also comes out equal to 5. And then the last side I need to find a length for is AD. And then remember, when you write a coordinate proof, you must write a sentence explaining why the calculations you did prove that your figure is what it is. So I have to write my little blurb here at the end. Why did I pick distance formula? Well, I wanted to find the lengths, and I wanted to show that the lengths are all the same. So the lengths of all four sides of this quadrilateral are the same. And that's what makes it a rhombus. All right, as always, I'm going to have you flip up to the next page and in your own words, summarize the important information you're going to need to know from this lesson. And then see if you can use your newfound knowledge in order to solve the problems on the next page.